So, in equation 1 if we substitute we get V A plus 17.66 is equal to 28.66. So, V A that is equal to 28.66 minus 17.66 that is equal to 11 kilo Newtons. So, this is how we are finding out the reactions. Now, if you will see at support A, right, I will draw a separate diagram over here. At support A, we are having one horizontal reaction as H A is obtained positive. So, our assumed direction is right, H A is equal to 5 kilo Newton, this is our support A. And second is support reaction V A, support reaction V A is also positive. So, our assumed direction is right. So, V A is 11 kilo Newtons. So, V A that is equal to 11 kilo Newtons, right. So, now if I want to find out the single force that is resultant R, I can easily find out. We can extend the line of action of force, we can extend the line of action of force. No need to, we can see that this will be our reaction R A or resultant R A, right. How can we find out R A? So, R A that is equal to under root of sigma h square plus sigma v square. What is sigma h over here? H A and what is sigma v over here? V A. So, if we substitute all the values of H A and V A in our equation, we can get the value of R A. So, 5 square plus 11 square. So, that is 25 plus 121. So, 25 plus 121 root that will give you 12.08. So, R A value is 12.08 kilo Newtons, right. Now, in which inclination this R A will act? So, you have to find out the value of alpha right. So, how will you find out the value of alpha? So, to find out the value of alpha, we can use our equation that you have already studied tan alpha is equal to sigma v upon sigma h. What is sigma v? That is v a. What is sigma h? H a. So, alpha that is equal to 10 inverse, 10 inverse. What is v a? 11. What is h a? that is 5. So, you get the answer 11 by 5 that is 2.2. So, 10 inverse 2.2 that gives you 65.55, right. So, my alpha will be 65.55. When you do this, then you get full marks because this is the last step which is very important to show the single resultant force that will produced at our hinge support, ok. So, this is the next uh, problem. Now, the next problem which I am going to take is basically a trapezoidal section. So, for a trapezoidal section, uh, trapezoidal section is basically nothing but it is a combination of uh, a uh, triangular load as well as a uh, uniformly distributed load. So, the last problem that I am going to take today which will complete our first topic of support reactions that is with the trapezoidal problem. I will take again a cantilever beam. Suppose, <coughs> we have got a cantilever beam and that cantilever beam is subjected to a trapezoidal loading. So, the load is acting in this particular manner, right. So, we can show over here that these are the variations of gradually increasing loads. Suppose, this intensity is 10 kilo Newton per meter and this intensity is <coughs> 15 kilo Newton per meter and the span is 3 meters, okay. 
So, we can we have to find out the support reaction for this particular beam which is subjected to, to a trapezoidal load. First of all we name it as A and the last point we name it as B. <coughs> now to start with first step as usual is to draw a free body diagram. So, to draw a free body diagram we will take the points in the downward direction, we will draw a horizontal line which will represent our beam. Then support B is a fixed support. So, we know at fixed support how many reactions are there? There are three reactions, one in the vertical direction that is V B, second is in the horizontal direction that is H B and third is a moment that is M B. So, these are the three reactions that will exist at the fixed support. Now, to start with we have to convert this into a concentrated load. The intensity kilo Newton per meter, kilo Newton per meter I want to convert it in terms of a concentrated load. So, what we will do I will draw a separate diagram over here, so that you can understand easily. Suppose, <coughs> this is our diagram. Okay. I am drawing a large view of this. So, you can see over here this is 10 kilo Newtons per meter and this is 15 kilo Newton per meter. What I will do? I will divide it into two standard shapes. What are the two standard shapes formed over here? Two standard shapes are one is a rectangle of intensity 10 kilo Newton per meter and second is a triangle of intensity. How much intensity there will be? If this is 10, this is 15, what will be this intensity? This intensity will be 5, 15 minus 10 that is 5 kilo Newton per meter. So, what are the two standard shapes? First is rectangle and second is triangle. Now, I can convert the intensities in terms of a concentrated point load. For UDL, for UDL we know how we convert the intensity. So, 10 kilo Newton per meter multiply by the length. What is the length given? The length given is 3 meters, so into 3 meters. So, that will give you 30 kilo Newton. Where will this 30 kilo Newton act? At the C G. What is the C G for 3 meters? It is 1.5. So, I can go from here 1.5 right and we can show that a concentrated load is acting of intensity 30 kilo Newtons. Okay? Now, the left out is our triangle. So, second is a triangle. If you recall our previous problem, whenever a triangular loading is there, if we want to convert the triangular load in terms of a concentrated load, we have to take the area of a triangle, because the load is gradually or uniformly varying from maximum to 0. right? So, we have to take the area of a triangle and area of a triangle is 1 half into base into height. So, 15 by 2 that is equal to 7.5 kilo Newtons. Where will this 7.5 kilo Newton act? This 7.5 kilo Newton will act at the C G. How do we get the C G? Intersections of the medians. right? So, intersections of the medians that will give us the value of or the point of C G and from 90 degree the C G lies at a distance of L by 3. So, L by 3 that is equal to 3 by 3 and that is equal to 1 and this distance that will be equal to what? 3 minus 1 that is equal to 2 meters. So, now I can show that from my point A at a distance of 2 meter, I have got a concentrated load of intensity 7.5 kilo Newtons. Right? So, this is 
five kilonewtons. So, now we have converted the trapezoidal load in terms of two concentrated loads, one is UDL which is 30 kilonewton point load and another is GBL which is acting as 7.5 kilonewton as a point load. Now, the problem is very simple, you have to apply your conditions of equilibrium that is sigma h is equal to 0, sigma v is equal to 0 and sigma moment is equal to 0. Right? So, we start with this diagram, we call it as a free body diagram. So, put it down as free body diagram. Now, to start with first is sigma h is equal to 0, is there any horizontal force acting on the structure or on the beam? There is only horizontal reaction h b, no another horizontal force. So, h b value that is equal to 0. Then we come to the second condition of equilibrium that is sigma v is equal to 0. What is the sign convention? Vertical upward force positive, vertical downward force negative. We start with 30, it is acting in the downward direction negative, then 7.5 again in the downward direction negative and v b in the vertical upward direction positive that is equal to 0. So, v b that is equal to 37.5 kilo newtons. This is your first answer of the reaction the V b value is 37.5 kilo newtons. Now, what is our third condition of equilibrium? Third condition of equilibrium is sigma moment is equal to 0, we take moment about support B. So, moment about support B, we start with first 30. Now, you are very much familiar about moment, line of action to the point where the moment is to be taken. What is the distance? 1.5. So, 30 into 1.5, right hand thumb rule. So, clockwise 7.5 into what is the perpendicular distance? What is the perpendicular distance? If this is 2 meter, this hole is 3 meters, this distance is 1 meter. So, 7.5 into 1 again clockwise positive and moment m b that is couple directly put m b no need to multiply with any distance as it is clockwise. So, it will be positive that is equal to 0. So, we get the answer moment about b that is equal to 15 3 is a 45, 45 plus 7.5. Fifty two point five and minus fifty two point five kilo Newton meters. Minus means my assumed direction of couple is wrong and the moment will act in which direction? Opposite direction. So, we can show it over here in the final answer that moment will act in anti clockwise direction of intensity of intensity 52.5 kilo Newton meters. So, I think uh, I have tried to cover all the different types of numericals that is different types of beams, cantilever beam, simply supported beam, overhanging beams and even we have covered different types of numericals that is a uh, point load, concentrated load or a uh, uniformly varying load. Even we have covered bracket loading as well as trapezoidal loading. Okay. So, this ends our today's session. In the next lecture, we will start with shear force and bending moment. Thank you. Bye.